Hey everyone, welcome back to What's New Andrew. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you can get notified of all the new videos that I put together. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to monitor all of the applications you have running on your network and get notified immediately if there's any issues. We're gonna be using the open source application Uptime Kuma and it'll be able to tell us through email, Discord, Slack, whatever method you want, whether you have any of your applications go offline. This is a great follow-up to our last video, which was about network monitoring. In that, we talked about how we could see if a server went offline or if something joined the network. This is gonna go a step further. So our servers may be running perfectly, but how do we know if our applications are up and running? This will be able to solve that problem. We'll be able to notify it immediately when things go offline and take whatever action we need to to correct it. So if this sounds something that'd be useful to you, let's jump in and have some fun. Okay, for this guide, you're gonna to wanna to have access to a machine with Docker, Docker Compose, and optionally Portainer. I tend to use Portainer in these because the uh, graphical interface makes it a little bit easier to follow along. If you prefer the command line interface, you can do that as well. Uh, you'll just have to modify some of the steps. So we'll go ahead and start with uh, Portainer. I have it running on a virtual machine on a Proxmox hypervisor. You could do this on a laptop, you could do this on a cloud machine, really any machine that works for you. You'll just wanna have it on something that's gonna be always on since this is gonna be monitoring uh, all of your containers and all of your applications. You wanna make sure that uh, this itself is actually running all the time. So let's go ahead and start over here. We're gonna click on our environment. We're gonna then click on stack. We've already got one stack uh, running, which is a WireGuard VPN. We're gonna use that as an example of something that's gonna go up and go down uh, during our monitoring. So we'll go ahead and create a new stack and this is where we're gonna add Uptime Kuma. So you can get the Docker Compose file in the link below. I'll have a link directly to my GitHub site where, where it's out there. Uh, but what we'll go ahead and do is paste that in here and then walk through it real quick. So here's the Docker Compose file for Uptime Kuma. Really the only things you need to worry about here, um, we have it set to one for the tag. You can use one or latest for this. Also the uh, volumes, I'm actually gonna use a volume called data and I define it down here at the bottom. You could use an absolute path on your virtual machine or, or whatever it is you're using to, to host this if you prefer, but I'm just gonna use a, a, a volume here. And then the ports, you need to keep the port on the right at 3001, that's the port into the container, but the one on the left you can change if, if for any reason you wanna change it from 3001, it's really up to you. Uh, but you can go ahead and leave it as this, or you can change it. Just don't change the one on the right because that's the one that gets into the Docker container. So let's go ahead and name this. We're gonna name this stack uptime, and then we'll go to the bottom and go ahead and start it up. And we'll hit deploy the stack and let it go ahead and pull down the image and start to uh, build everything out. So it's been deployed successfully. Let's take a look at it and it's starting. So we'll wait here a minute. Might take a couple of minutes or so for it to uh, fully start up. So we'll go ahead and let that finish and then we'll go on to the next step. The container's up and running and it's healthy. So let's go ahead and log into Uptime Kuma for the first time. To do that, we're gonna go to the IP address of the machine we're on with that 3001 port at the end of it. So we'll go ahead and open a new tab. We've got it here. This is the IP address of the machine we're on with 3001 and so we'll go ahead and go into it. And the first thing it's gonna do is, is ask you to set up a, an a account that's gonna be the admin account. So we're just gonna have this called admin because I'm not too creative. And then we're gonna put a password in. Make sure this is a good secure password. My password's gonna be, as you can probably guess, password123. You should always choose a better password than that. So let's go ahead and move forward and we'll hit create. And there we are, we're in Uptime Kuma. As you can see, it's obviously not monitoring anything, but you can quickly see on this dashboard uh, what you'll be able to, to see just from uptimes and things that might be in maintenance or down, that kind of thing. So let's add our first monitor. If you recall, I mentioned that I have a WireGuard server. This is the interface for that WireGuard server. So we have this, uh, this is what we're, what we're gonna actually monitor. So we're gonna go into it and create a new monitor. We're gonna call it use HTTPS. If you look here, there's a whole bunch of different options, just tons of different things you can monitor. So we're just gonna do, again, the HTTPS. We're gonna call this uh, WireGuard. We're gonna put the URL in. That's the URL we just had before, which is uh, the same 
um, same server with 51821 as the uh, the port. We're going to have it check every 60 seconds. You can drop that down, I think, to 15 seconds is the lowest. And then we're just going to hit save. And right away, it'll go out there and check. And you see it uh, was added successfully and it's up and running. So we're doing great. So uh, we now have uh, a monitor that's checking that service. But what happens if it goes down? Let's go ahead and go over here. We're going to go back to our portainer instance. And we're going to find that container that has our wire guard, this one right here. We're going to actually remove it. So what we're doing is taking it offline. And we'll go back over here. And after the 60 seconds, it's going to check it again. And we'll see that it, it's gone down. So we'll wait just a moment and uh, let it run and check it again. And perfect. Just like we expected, it's showing that it's down. So you can set that timing to, I think, like I mentioned, about 15 seconds. It'll check it if you need to check it that often. But now that we see that this uh, service is down, that's great if we're sitting here watching this dashboard all the time. But what if we're not watching the dashboard? How do we get it to notify us? So there's a great um, setup that this has with all kinds of ways to notify us. So let's take a look now at how we can have this service tell us if something goes down or if something comes back up online. Okay, to check the notifications, we're gonna go up to settings and we're gonna go over here to notifications. And then we'll hit setup notifications. Now in the drop down here, you've got all kinds of uh, notification types to choose from. You can just go through this list, anything from Discord to email to Slack, there's all kinds of options in here. We're gonna set up an email um, notification here. So we just click email and then we're gonna fill this out. We'll just call it my email alert. And I'll go ahead and fill it out with all this information and then we'll save it and we'll come right back to it and test out the, uh, the notification emails. Okay, our uh, email notification is set up here. You can have any number that, that you want. What we're gonna do is we're gonna actually go over to WireGuard here and we're gonna say edit. And up here, we're gonna toggle on the notifications. So you could have any notifications you want. Also, you don't have to go back into uh, WireGuard if you, uh, or any of your other monitors, if you add new notifications. Within the setup, you can tell it to apply it to existing ones if you want. So then we'll go down here to the left, hit save, and that's all we need to do. Now, we'll actually uh, be able to get notifications whenever it comes online. So let's test it out. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go back over to Portainer and we're gonna start up the stack with WireGuard again. So we'll go in here and we'll say, update the stack. And let's go back to Uptime Kuma and we'll watch it. And as soon as it comes back online and the next check, go, check goes through, you should be able to see, uh, see the message here and then we'll get an email message as well. And there we go. We got the up, time, the up message, the 200. Okay, so everything's working. We also got the email that just arrived. So we can see that we got a message saying that our service has come back up online. So that's how easy it is to set it up to get you notifications as soon as something comes back online. And now again, all we have to do to check when it goes down, come back over here again, we're gonna remove and stop this container. And then as soon as it goes back offline again, we'll get another email message telling us that we've gone offline. So we'll be able to see that here in just a second. There we go. Now we can see that it went offline again. We got the down message, uh, the little pop up here while we were watching. And then we just got the email that uh, told us the same thing that we we're uh, actually gone offline again. So that's how you can get the messages that things have gone offline back online. You get a message as, as soon as it happens. The next thing we want to look at is after we check the messages and the notifications is we want to look at status pages. So you might want to be able to have a status page that shows how your services are running. Maybe you have a small business and you want to show how things are working or you just want to show your friends how how cool your uh, home lab setup is. So if we go over here to uh, status pages at the top, hit new status page. We're just going to call this test because I'm not too creative. And then we'll hit next. We'll add a group. You can call this whatever you want. And then we'll select the monitor. Now, again, we're still wa uh, watching that monitor the, or the WireGuard monitor. We'll down on the bottom left, hit save. And now you've got a page. You can just use this address up here. 
you've got a page that you can share with others to be able to show uh, your status pages. So it's great to share this page, but most people are obviously not going to have access to your local environment. So let's go ahead and set this up. We're going to use Cloudflare Zero Trust, and we're going to actually set this up and create a domain name so we can access this. I've got another video that does the whole step-by-step -step, uh, setting up Cloudflare tunnels and uh, Zero Trust um, access. So you can look at that video, but we're going to go and do a quick version of it here and walk through it real quick on uh, how to give this attached to a domain name. So we'll do that right now. So we've gone over to Cloudflare. Now what we want to do is set up the, the domain name so it can point to our uptime Kuma. What we're going to do is going to go over here to Zero Trust. We'll go to uh, Networks and Tunnels. I've already got this tunnel set up that's connected to my virtual machine, so we're going to use that. If you click on it and then hit Edit, we'll say Add a Public Host Name. Add Public Host Name, the button there, and then we're just going to call this Uptime. And that's going to be the subdomain. The domain is going to be what's new Andrew.dev. And then the URL is going to be that IP address for our local server, as well as the port number. And we're just going to be using HTTP. It'll use uh, HTTPS certificates, but it's just going to serve it locally uh, through HTTP. But it's all, all still secure. So what we're going to do now is hit save host name. And now we've mapped that local address that was over here on the right to this domain name. So we'll test it by going ahead and going out to it and checking that it works. And there you go, we're in there looking at it. We can see our WireGuard monitor that we had already up. We can uh, add more monitors to this. If you wanna go to the status page that we set up, now you can share this address with anybody else external. So if you give them this address up here, now they would be able to get to this even though they're not on your local network. So it's great. You can also restrict access to the dashboard side of things so that folks can't get in there and mess with anything. However, uh, now you've got this set up to where you can share it, whether it's a small business, whether it's just, again, showing off to your friends with all the cool services you have. You've got a uh, dashboard that can show you what's going on. Right now, it already automatically tells you there's degraded service because this one's down. But if we were to, uh, to start, start this container again, you'd see it go right back to green and everything would be good to go. So that's a great way for you to set up a, a monitoring site, set up monitors for all of your applications and make sure that you've got everything up and running that you need. So that's it for today's guide on application and systems monitoring. I hope you found something useful. I hope you liked it. If you did, give it a thumbs up if you found it uh, helpful for you. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed already and I'll see you in the next video.